So I want to talk about perception. And there's a lot to it there, of course, but here's my Sabine part. It's really quite fascinating that we really don't even understand ourselves. We've been with ourselves all this time. We have reflected, we are in the car with ourselves, we have our dreams that we have, our, our choices, our ambitions, and um, yet most people don't understand themselves. And it's also a beautiful thing. It's not like we should. There's a beauty in the mystery, in the unknown, in the mythical, in the symbolic, in the indescribable. Can't put it into words, right? So first of all, on a very, very basic level, it's not really that basic, but it seems basic because we're putting it into basic words. When you encounter a situation, so looking at me on this video screen or going out into your garden, or cooking, or driving, or being in a room with lots of people, you will be there and you will have the way in which you can perceive things, right? You know it, by hearing things, by seeing things, sensing things. And the amazing thing is that everyone will perceive whatever dynamic you're in, even if they're next to you, completely differently. You may have overlap that you can share about, but how do you even know that you're using words the same way? We all focus on different things and we can only focus on so much information in a room, in a situation. There's just so much information in one moment. Even the way my voice moves, um, the body, your body, the way you're feeling, your surroundings, the temperature, the sounds. I used to write about this in my in, in my blog and also as a yoga teacher, just trying to describe how it feels to drink a glass of water. So everyone could have the same glass of water, the same temperature. You take that glass, you have your sip. It's impossible to really relate and to know if we're experiencing the same thing and we're not experiencing the same thing because of our different preferences. <laughs> Now, it is really powerful to be aware of that when you're interacting with friends, loved ones, you know, your kids, your, your boss, whatever, that they don't even know. And that's humbling. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Only the ego thinks it knows. Only the ego will try and package that. Only the ego will try and make a story around it so that it has a sense of identity naturally. So what happens in essence, this is the simple part, although we could dissect it, like we could do a cell and go infinite, a cell under the microscope. And what goes on in the cell of a leaf, for example, the cellular systems of a leaf is as vast as the cosmos is endless before or around us. So you feel have filters, belief systems. So if you're going into a shop, where they're selling certain foods, you'll have certain preferences, you'll have certain belief systems about what you expect. So these are initially your filters already, because what you expect is what you're going to end up seeing. That's how we are wired. Fascinating. Really fascinating. But thank God for neuroplasticity and that we can expand that and that we are constantly expanding and changing. So after that, you're looking through those filters, through your upbringing, whatever it is, through your preferences, through your capacity to see color, through your capacity to hear, through your capacity to be even present versus ruminating and having background thoughts constantly, right? It's infinite. It's literally infinite. Then you delete what you see. We all can't perceive everything. Certain things will be deleted. They're not even conscious to you. Unconscious, yes. Conscious, no. You distort. So, you know, we all look at things differently, a dress, a person's body, a face, a piece of art. You'll be distorting that according to your perception. And you will generalize because, again, you will be looking for what you're familiar with. Even though that seems obvious and basic, 
if we're looking at every situation like that, so say someone wants to have a discussion with you and it turns out really well, you're open and receptive versus mm, you feel agitated and cranky versus you are totally close to it. And then they ask, well, why didn't you want to talk to me? Why didn't we have this conversation? Why did that feel so energetically amazing or, or really awful? We will make up a story. Mm, I just didn't feel good today. Or I wasn't vibing it. Or I've had that conversation before and it never went well. We are just not seeing that open potential because we've deleted, distorted and generalized the situation, including ourselves. Now, to me, that is great news because we are realizing things helps us to be able to shift them and go beyond them and to be able to also take ourselves more lightly and others more lightly. And that's great because getting heavy and getting stuck in the ego and, you know, talking about right and wrong and you versus me is how we stop learning. It's how we contract and it's how we don't evolve. Now, this is a survival mechanism and it's an ego thing and it has its place. And in the past, it had its place because I often explain this because it's so interesting. We used to have to survive by being in a community and we still do. But in the past, it was more nomadic. It would be a tribe. It would be maybe surviving the snowstorm or the desert or, or a, t a particular tough time after the war to survive. And... It's beautiful to form a community and to support each other. We need it. We need a doctor or someone who helps to grow the plants or someone who looks after the kids or someone who has some skill to build the house, etc., etc., right? So our unconscious program would be aware that we are better off when we are liked and when we are in a community. But the thing is, we have to choose that community and we have to have filters around that. And it goes on and on and on. So this is also why people are getting caught up in having likes and people who are not realizing why they're doing it, you know, spend a lot of energy trying to be liked by the world, which is never going to happen because we are so mixed. So there's always going to be people who will like you and who won't like you. It's just the way it is. And that is so important. Wouldn't it be weird if we were all the same? I used to talk about that a lot too. Like, wouldn't it be so weird if we were all really similar? That would be, you know... It's fascinating to learn from each other. And this is part of our evolution now to stand in our own center, but to respect each other really because we are inherently conscious of our heart and of intelligence and all of our worthiness, which everyone has. And yet we co-create, we collaborate and we don't feel that because someone's got something it's going to take away from us or because someone doesn't, you know, have something they need to be rescued even ultimately, but that we can collaborate, that we can meet and that we can discuss and not make so many assumptions. Because even sometimes when someone is really struggling, again, this is the complexity of life, are they going to benefit from being left to be empowered on their own and you make them say, make them be aware or say to them, I really think you can work this out versus where comes the time where you really say, hey, I'm going to help you. You really I'm, I really got what you need right now. I'm going to help you with this and then you can fly on your own or with me. This is an infinite potential thing. And that's the hard bit about being a parent. And I'll make different YouTubes on that. Every child will respond differently and some will want more nurturing. Some will want less and thrive on that. And some will need it sporadically a lot then and a lot less then. And it's this dance. This is continual dance and you have many opportunities. And this is where meditation comes in. Finding your grounding, realizing this cosmic unfolding for everybody. Respecting everyone's unique journey. Falling off the bike can be important. You don't always need to be on it. You might discover something on the ground. You might discover that you are really good at jumping off the bike before you crash. You might find that you meet someone amazing in that situation or that you hate falling and that because you don't like falling, you conquer falling. It is so infinite. It's crazy. So as long as we can remember that, we can really truly honor ourselves and others. And I will make YouTubes about not getting overwhelmed or staying in your center with all this information. In fact, I'll make that the next one because I'm feeling it. I hope this helped. Please feel free to ask questions and ask me if you want me to elaborate on something more because this is so fascinating and um, 
I know that you'll be seeing it differently than me. And I think that's the most wonderful thing on earth. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know, you know, what inspires you or what makes you feel trapped or free. This is all really important. And these days people read other people's comments and learn from each other and form a community more than ever before. And um, I'm right there for that. It's really powerful in these days. Choosing that, choosing love, choosing the community that you resonate with and um, what really serves you and letting go of that other stuff. New paradigm. Okay, ciao for now.